Hey, buddy. All right. Uh, the attendance tonight was 10,171. Uh, the performance of the night goes to uh, Glover and Hamzat. And then the fight of the night, Jan and Sanhagen. They all won $50,000. Congratulations to them. I mean, after a card like that, I assume it was kind of hard to decide who was getting very, bonuses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very hard to, 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 to decide. Um, there's a couple other people that we'll definitely take care of on the card. Um, let's start off with the main event, right? What a story for Glover. I mean, he didn't just win the title. He actually came out and dominated the champion, got the win. What did you take away from his performance? And did you think something looked a little bit off about Jan tonight? Um, I don't know. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's tough to say. I mean, Glover Teixeira is and has been one of the toughest guys in the division for a very long time. This was his dream forever to get this title shot. He finally gets it, and, and he did it tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a great guy. I'm happy for him. Yeah, it, it, I saw you guys having quite a long conversation in the cage afterwards. Can you share what he was saying and what it means for you to have a guy who's been on your roster for so long finally get this, this title? He was telling me that he was supposed to be on The Ultimate Fighter, and, uh, you, you know, he had the, the visa problems and, you know, you know, how that changed the course of his life, not being able to get back in the country when he should have been in the UFC at that, at that time. He was just going through the whole story, you know, and it's, uh, I said, better late than never, buddy. Yeah, I think we're all fans of combat sports, and this is one of those moments where a guy struggles through a crazy journey like that to see this come off. This is like the best part of this sport, right? Yeah, I, I mean, this guy never gave up. All the adversity that he's faced in his career, <clears throat> and here at 42 years old, a few days after his birthday, he wins the title. So... It's a pretty cool story. Couldn't uh, happen to a better guy, too. Another cool moment. But the thing that sucks is Jan is a great guy, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, this is one of those fights <clears throat> you didn't want to see anybody lose. Uh, another cool moment was when Hamzat picks up his opponent, turns, walks towards you while screaming and shouting at you, and slams him down. I'm very curious what he happened to be saying. Like. Yeah, he was yelling crazy. He should have me the whole fight. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, but uh, basically just saying... You know, I'm going to fight everybody. I'll fight Brock Lesnar. I don't care who it is. You know, he's just yelling stuff like that. Yeah, he's basically picked up right where he left off, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, listen, last time we were here, we knew this guy was special. Something, you know, this COVID thing is one of the weirdest things any of us have ever seen. You get you get some people that, that, that fit the profile, you know, to be high risk and it doesn't even feel like a – a bad cold to them, and then a guy who's in phenomenal shape like this guy gets hit as hard as he did by COVID. Um, but he's back, and there's no doubt this kid's special. Yeah. What do you do with him, right? Because he wants to fight, as you say, all the time. But you also need to start putting him against like top-tier guys. Do you just say, well, he can fight whoever says yes until there's an opening against a top-tier guy, or do you make him sit and wait until he fights a contender? It's tough once you start to break into the top ten, which he will do on Tuesday. Um, I, uh, but yeah, listen, if he wants to stay busy, I, I'm a big believer in that anyway, especially when with the huge layoff he's had. So I don't know. We would figure it out if that's really what he wanted to do. I mean, it's hard to say right now, right, because he's only been hit twice in four UFC fights. But what do you think the ceiling is on this guy? How about he's got more wins in the UFC than he's been hit in the UFC? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, similarly, uh, another similar dominant performance by Islam tonight. Again, another guy who's pushing against those top guys and needs to get a, a top-ranked guy. What do you do with him next? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, he's ready for, the, for somebody in the top five. You know, he's ready top five, top three, whatever becomes available. And, uh, and then, obviously, if he, if he gets through that, he's, he's in line for a title shot. Is it hard to find these guys' fights? Do you get, I mean, like, I can't imagine many people looking at Hamza being like, absolutely, you know? Or I think it'll be easier to get them fights now. I mean, now that once you get into that top, top five, you know, people have to fight you if they want to become the best. And then uh, last thing for me, a scuffle in the, in the crowd between Hasbullah and Abdu. I just, you know, no one wants to see that sort of carnage. Can we get them in the cage to sort <laughs> this out properly? <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was funny. I don't I don't know what the deal is with those two, why they don't like each other, but uh yeah. people too similar, you know, they fall out all the time, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. 
It happens. It's a rough business. <laughs> Book it. All right. Uh, Dan, right here next to him. Uh, Piotr Jan and Korzenik, and obviously fight of the night, but a lot of fans are just raving about that fight, just nonstop action throughout the entire fight. So when you're sitting cage side, like you said at the press conference, these two could very well be the two best bantamweights in the world. So this fight had to have lived up to the expectations, correct? Yeah, what, what fight did you think was fight of the night? Co-main event. I said you gave it fight of the night, but what were your thoughts while the fight was actually playing out in front of you? Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. I mean, the, the, the fight was awesome. Talking about Sandhagen and, and yeah, uh, Sandhagen, uh, you know, staying on the outside and, and using his distance. Well, the counter punching by both of those guys, the 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 body punching by both of those guys, the kicks to the body. I, I mean, th those two went to absolute war tonight. Peter Jan is, is an a, a savage. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. He's unstoppable. He just keeps moving forward, um, and, and and here we are. You know, he's. If you look at the way that whole thing played out in, in the last fight, th this was, this was the, the right way for this to go. He's, he's the champ. He, he, you know, he and Al Jermaine will do it again. Islam was just in here, and he said the only fights he'll take next are title fight or number one contender fight. He said he told you the division needs to change. Uh, everyone in the top five has already fought for the title. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, he's not wrong about that. Um, and you never know how this is going to play out. You never know what's going to, who's going to get injured, who's fighting who, who's going to lose, who can't fight on such and such a date. Anything's possible. Well, he seems to want his title fight here in Abu Dhabi. A title fight here in Abu Dhabi? That's what Islam wants. Probably makes sense, <laughs> you know. But uh, who knows? It depends on when it happens, you know, because we can do title fights anywhere. And then I don't know if you were in the arena yet, but a little bit of a weird situation with the referee in the Dos Santos fight. Uh, a lot of, obviously, a lot, they could have been stopped many times. Uh, Dos Santos got a point taken away right at the end for an accidental low blow that without give, being given a warning. And then he was, ta he was removed from his duties the rest of the night. Can you remember an incident like this with a referee? Yeah. <laughs> We've had lots of incidents with referees. Have you know, removed, like, to be removed in the middle of a card. He was yeah, to we've removed guys in the middle of cards, too. Um, but this was pretty bad. Horrible. And then, uh, you gave an interview with Oscar yesterday, and you said there was a possibility of, an, of a fighter fighting tonight. Could it possibly be an opponent for Nate Diaz? Is that still true? Um, yeah, I mean, anybody on, on here tonight in that weight class could be an opponent for Nate Diaz. <laughs> Thank you. Could, uh, Ham, could Hamza be an opponent for Nate Diaz? Yeah. Anybody in that weight class could be an opponent for Nate Diaz. <clears throat> hey, Dana. Uh, did you have your meetings today with, with the people here, and how did they go, please? I did. It went really well, but uh, unfortunately, we're not ready to announce anything yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. Believe me, it's killing me. It <clears throat> looks like I'm probably going to have to do another trip out here in a couple weeks So, um, and, 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 and button this thing up. Was it anything to concern you, or was it just... No, just no, it? no, it was just, it's just not done yet. You know, there's, there's still a lot of things that we got to get figured out, and uh, I was hoping we'd get that done today, but we didn't. And what do you make of Eddie Had Arena tonight? Was not, it was just over half full if it was 10,000. You know, what did you think of the sound there, and, and how much do you want to look forward to coming back to it, seeing it full next time, hopefully? What's the question? How much are you looking forward to coming back to see Eddie Had Arena full? Yeah, no, listen, I, I love coming here, man. I, I love this place. I am now a citizen of, uh, of UAE, so I'm going to love it even more. Congratulations. How'd that make you feel? Thank yesterday? you. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. Did you expect that? Huh? Did you expect it? I, no, I didn't see it coming yesterday. We, we, we uh, had talked about it before, but I didn't know it was coming, no. And Dana, just lastly for me, with Kamzat and Islam, with the reception they got tonight, how much more determined would you be to bring them back here and ensure that they fight here going forward? Well, what's crazy is uh, the, the day of the press conference when Lee and, and Hamzat squared off, that, that video did a million views in 20 minutes. And then the one that I posted yesterday on mine did a million views. And, uh, I mean, it was by far... The, the closest thing to it was Islam. His was like 200,000. Um, so it went, it went Hamzat, 
Islam, and then the main event. Thank you. Hi, Dana. Hi. So, what's who is next for Peter Jan? I mean, whether it's Sterling, whether it's Dilatra or Merab, maybe. Yeah, it's Aljamain Sterling to unify the title. All right. So, today there was like 20 Russian fighters. Who impressed you most? Jan looked unbelievable. I, mean, I just think Jan is such a savage, man. You, you, you can't stop that guy. He keeps moving forward. Uh, like I said a second ago, the counter punching, the punches to the body, spinning back this, you know, um, never, never getting frustrated when, when, when San Hagen was on the outside, hitting him with, you know, picking him apart, moving, running around the, the octagon. He stayed right on him, kept putting pressure on him, kept trying to break him down and wear him down. I mean, you, you, you couldn't get a, 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 a a most more durable, technical, badass guy than Peter Jan. So, um, is it possible that Hamza Chumayev can be a backup if uh, Covington or Kamaru Usman pulls out? Is he a backup if, yeah. if Kamaru pulls out? Or Covington? I, can 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 I he haven't step, even I haven't step, even yeah never even crossed my mind. That fight needs to happen. The, the, the Usman versus Covington fight needs to happen. I mean, that's it's one of the greatest fights I've ever seen. I don't see the guy pulling out of that fight. Dana, the last one. It's interesting to hear your opinion. The last week in Moscow, Timothy Johnson was knocked out by Fyodor Emelianenko. So do you still consider Fyodor as an overrated fighter? <laughs> so should I not see him as overrated because he knocked out Tim Johnson? I'm just, I'm just asking. <laughs> I, I don't think one way or another about it. You know, I saw, I saw last week or a couple weeks ago where, where Fedor said, you know, th you know, this guy's all about money or whatever. First of all, I don't even know Fedor. Fedor doesn't know me. We met one time. Um, you know, his statement was, I was all about money. He should have been more about money when we made you that offer. And... Um, wherever the fuck we were, whatever island that was we were on, and you wouldn't still be fighting at 45 years old. So, is that, that, I, I don't think I answered your question, but that's my response. Is there any possibility, Dana, at least to make him one fight in the UFC, for example, at this moment? You know I offered him a deal that he still must lay in bed every night and bum out about. We offered him a deal. We tried to do a deal with Fedor. Apparently, Fedor doesn't like me. So I don't see it happening. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Uh, hello, Dana. So my first question is, I know it's hard to think right now after the fight, but what do you think uh, Jan should do to rebuild himself and how many potential wins he's away from getting the title shot back? For who? For Jan Blachowicz. Blachowicz? Yeah. How many fights does he need to get a title shot again? Yeah. He just lost an hour ago. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I, th there's, no, there's no number. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what's next for him when he fights and, uh, and, and, you know, and how it all plays out. Okay, and uh, could you confirm that uh, Jir Prochaska is next? as a next contender, or you, you still uh, have to figure out? Got to figure it out, yeah. yeah. I don't know. And uh, the last question from me. There, is, there has been a rumor about other Polish fighter, uh, Mateusz Gamrot, that he will fight Diego Ferreira. Could you confirm it, or not really? That, that Giga is fighting who? No, no, no. Uh, ah, sorry. Who? Yeah, Mateusz Gamrot from Lightweight. And there is a rumor he will fight Diego Ferreira. I have no idea. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I didn't expect to be up here. Hey, Dana. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, 
there was a little mishap with uh, Hamza's uh, weight miss. Do you think there's any concern there that you want him to go to the PI or anything, or do you think it's just a matter of his layoff? No. No, I'm not concerned about it. He's had a long layoff, and who knows? I don't know. Would you say he was the star of the night? I know, obviously, Jan had 100%. a great point. 100%. 100%. I mean, not, not even close. Like I said, everything – I don't know what you guys uh, had as far as traffic, but – our traffic on Hamza was off the roof and, you know, ten times more than, than anybody else. Uh, I saw him backstage. I, I think he was talking to Sean Shelby. Are you, is he asking to be booked real quick? I mean, is he looking for a super quick turnaround? Hamza was talking to Sean Shelby? I think so. I think that's what I heard. Yeah. I mean, is he, is he, did he tell you that he wants to get booked real, uh, real quick? I'm or? pretty sure Sean's in Vegas, but uh, no. He, he, he hasn't told us that, that, you know, listen, I'm sure the guy does want to fight. We'll get home and we'll figure out what's next for him. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You done with me? Have a safe trip home, everybody. Thank you.